After completion of the experimental part, we, now we are going into the calculations. How you are going into the calculations? What you are going to calculate? Basically, here you are going to find out the theoretical damping coefficient and then the experimental damping coefficient by using the data that you are acquired from the experimental part. So, what are the data you are going to get? You are going to get a data like steady state height, highest level of the height, like highest peak of the uh, liquid level and lowest peak of the liquid level, as well as the time which took to reach the steady state, the height of the liquid, which is the steady state. So, steady state height, as I told you, as I shown in the video, for example, if you have a manometer like this, manometer like this, okay, steady state height means initial height of the liquid level, it is same in the both the side, both in the right side limb as well as the left side limb. that is 50 as I have shown in the, as I have shown in the table, and then what is history and history? highest level and lowest level, when we are opening the ball to, when we are opening the ball to, the whole vacuum which the which is connected in the right side of the limb through this wall through this limb the vacuum is entered into the right side of the limb when it is entered into the right side of the limb simply whatever the liquid the vacuum which is there that will be completely entered into the left side then what happens here the liquid level becomes zero and it will reduce to the liquid level reduces to the around 30 or 32 in my experimentation, when I am doing the experiment, the liquid level is reached up to 30 to 30. 30 to the 32, it has reached. So, now I have closed the wall and it reaches to the uh, wall 2 and it is uh, the height is to the 32 or 30 or 32, uh, the maximum level it reaches, okay, in the left side limb. Now, what happens? I am going to open the wall 2 now. I will complete to open the wall. What is going to happen, uh, happen while, while I open the wall to the liquid level is at 32, it will suddenly fall down to the lowest level at its fall. Around as per the data, it reaches the lowest level is 11. Okay? Once it is fall down, it will not stop. Again, the liquid due to its density, it will fall down and it will rise up. It will rise up to 27.1 27.1 Then it will stop? No, since it is a liquid which has a more density, the mercury has more density as the water. So it falls down, then it rises to 27, then it will fall down up to like 30 and it will rise to something level below the 27 and it will rise below the 30. Like that it will reach up to something, it will reach to 50. After something it will reach to 50. So the diagram which looks like when it is falling down, the diagram which looks like this. So initially it is highest level, it is fall down to the lowest as possible. And then it will rise up to below 32 only. Then it will come like this. And it will go like this. It will go like this. Until how? Until it reaches to the steady state until it reaches to the steady state. After some time, the value comes to the steady state. What is steady state height here? Here the steady state height is 50. So that means the liquid height will come to the 50. Okay? So this is the H1 and this is the H2. So that is what, what, is, that is what I have given you. H1 and H2 I have got it down. And then the time it took from here to here, the time it took to reach the steady state the time T T time in cycles per second the time it took for number of cycles number of cycles per second from year to year 1 2 3 4 like that ok until it will be satisfied so that time I have not it down H1 the lowest level I have not it down H2 the highest level I have not it down and 15 the steady state point has Clear? H what is H2, what is H1, what is HSN? Time. How do you know? So once I have noted down all the data until it reaches to steady state, where I will stop my experiment, that I have to know. Where I am going to stop my experiment, you can see the H1 diagram. 
Initially it is 11 and the second thing it is reaches to 11.5 12, 12.2, 13, sorry 12.2, 12.5, 13, 13.1 and 13.1 That means after this it is not going down, it comes to a steady state 13.1 and 13.1 comes to a steady state So once the system reaches the steady state then we will stop our experiment and we will start calculating the theoretical damping coefficient as well as the experimental damping coefficient Right? So now let us see how to do the calculations. How we can find out the theoretical damping coefficient and the experimental damping coefficient. So let me write, delete this so that we can see the calculations properly. This is L. Okay. So now what are the equations you require to find out the theoretical damping coefficient and to find out the experimental damping coefficient? So this is the equation to find out the theoretical damping coefficient and this is the equation to find out the experimental damping coefficient. So now let us see what are the terminologies which are there in the equation. First we are going to about the theoretical damping coefficient. So here the terminologies are mu. What is mu here? Mu is the viscosity of the liquid. What kind of liquid, which liquid we are using here? We are using the mercury. So mercury, viscosity you are going to note it down. And L is the length of the liquid level, length of the liquid level. Okay? The L we, are, we will get it from here. The equation I have given. By using this equation you can find out L, rho, the liquid density, mercury density will uh, write down. G, the gravitational force, that is 9.81 meters per second, that is constant value. So you will use it. D square, what is D square here? I have given the D here. That is diameter of the manometer. Diameter of the manometer, that is constant value according to your equipment which you are using. So here, in my laboratory, what are the equipment which is there? That is, that has a diameter of the tube is 0 0.75 centimeters. And by, when I am doing the calculations, I will convert the centimeters into the meters. Fine. So, D I know tau. Tau is the theoretical time constant. How we can find out the theoretical time constant? For that I have an equation. Tau T H. Theoretical time constant. For that I have an equation L by 2C. Root over L by 2C. So, only two unknowns are there. Here. One is the L. Second one is the tau. So, first we will find out the L. Then we will find out the tau. Then, you can find out the theoretical damping coefficient. Simple. Just you have the values, you will substitute here. The L equation, the length of the liquid, right? L equation. L equal to 2H as steady state height divided by 100 plus X. What is X here? Again, the horizontal distance between two legs. The horizontal distance between two legs. This is the left leg and this is the right leg. Left limb and right leg. Between these two distances, is x x okay <coughs> that value is 2.5 centimeters i have done when i am doing the calculations i have done it into the meters right so x value i will hs value i will get it from here for the first point only i am going to calculate first we will do it for the first point okay so hs value here the 15 that is constant throughout the experiment okay so 15 you can substitute x value is constant that you are substituting here 2.5 cm you are converting to converting into meters and then d value that I as I told you diameter of the manometer that is 0 0.75 cm so the whole this one will be in meters like centimeters to meters I will convert this one I will convert into meters and this one I will convert into meters so the l value I will get it in meters only just substitute the values and find out the l value once I have found out the l value I got l value one unknown value I have found out for finding the theoretical time equation. And second one is tau, that is theoretical time constant. Only one unknown that we can find out using this equation, the theoretical time constant tau th, that is root over L by 2h, 2 2z, sorry. L value you have found out here that I am going to substitute, divided by g value that is gravitational force, that is meters per, that is in meters square per second, and L is in meters. So meter meter you get cancelled, you get the tau value as by n. 
okay so by substituting m value tau value and d value and everything which are already known once you substitute it you can find out the theoretical value you can find out the theoretical damping coefficient up to that it is clear now you have to find out the x mental damping coefficient x mental damping coefficient how you can find it out x mental damping coefficient equation is ln of wo this is not zero this is wo wo to the power square divided by pi square plus ln wo to the power square wo to the power of one by two यहाँ पे क्या था what you have to find out here the unknown pi value is constant three point one six something that you will not know you can write down but what is wo what is wo wo means power shift to find out the power shift I have given the equation what is the equation here this power shift equation I have given so to find out the power shift here there are again two unknowns that is a and b what is a what a is the lower height difference and b is the higher height difference how we can find out the lower height difference a equal to h2 that is the highest peak the liquid reaches the highest level the liquid reaches h2 that i have already given here and h s that is the self state value this minus this minus this will is the value of a and then b is the highest higher different uh, height difference higher height difference you can find out steady state value minus lower lower uh, height uh, level of the liquid that you can uh, you can put it down here h value is 15 and h1 value is later that it is 4 ok like that uh, a value you can find out 27.1 minus 15 you will get power point you will get 12.1 then substitute a by b 12.1 by 4 you will get 3 point something 3 point something 3 point we have that just go where you got it directly you can substitute 3 point 2 3 point 2 this is 3 point 1 then you can find out the you can find out the experimental damping coefficient and if you want to find out the decay ratio how we can find out the decay ratio simple the equation dr equal to a by b whole square r you can say simply wo a by b is the own so both square that is power shot square power shot square will use the decay ratio this is how you can do the calculation for the first value I have write down the values here. I have to do the calculation. By that, you have eight values, and you can do. You can find out eight different theoretical functions as well as eight different experimental damping coefficient. Okay. I hope the calculations, the experimental part, and theory. So in this particular video, I have explained the theory, theory related to manometers, where we have discussed a simple manometer, and then YouTube manometer. In the YouTube manometer, we have discussed gauge pressure manometer and vacuum. As a manometer, we have discussed, and after that, the third type manometer is differential manometer. So, we have discussed about these three manometers, then we have conducted the experiment that is time constant of manometer, and after that, I have shown you how to do the calculations. I hope you understand the experimental procedure and all. And yeah, if you have any doubts, you can give it in the comment box. Thank you.